Okay, we're going to start. Let's just take a moment. Feel your feet rooting into the earth. Soften the knees. Take five breaths on your own. I started taking a women's karate class and moving across the floor, doing kicks with other women. I just had a really inner sense that this could be really important for women. When you're finished, eyes open if they were closed. And let's begin. My name is Annie Elman. I'm one of the co-founders of Brooklyn Women's Martial Arts. And lock your head. Great job. And In the early 70s, women were getting together and one of the things that was being talked about was sexual violence against women. It was a time of really wanting to do things that women had never done before. So women were learning how to do all different kinds of skills that supposedly only men could do. And martial arts was a big one first teacher in New York that I studied with for a while was Nadia Telsey, who co-founded Brooklyn Women's Martial Arts with me. She was teaching in a dojo that Gerald Orange was the sensei. It was very unusual for the 70s for a man to both have a women's karate class in his dojo, but also let that class be led and taught by a woman. I also felt that because of being a black man that he really understood oppression and I think he was very unusual that he translated that to how did it feel to be a woman? How did it feel to be powerless? And this is the eye gouge here. Hip moves first. I feel like so much of my adult life has been shaped by you and I could really fall to pieces because it's so extraordinary what I learned from you and that I had the privilege to be able to teach so many people. You are our source. You know, I've always loved women and sometimes it, it, in my life I've seen some that were mistreated and, and it really bothered me. It bothered me. I wanted them to have something that they could do to make this threat you know, disappear, dissipate, evaporate. Yeah, and I wanted them to annihilate. <laughs> no, you did. No, you imparted that to yeah. us in such a deep way yeah. that it really made it possible for us to go and share it. I remember you go in any dojo, you know, and, and there was, and, and they had, even if they had women in the dojo, they didn't have certain things in the bathrooms. That was one of the first things I noticed. It the was tampons in there. Yeah. I could not believe it. Yeah, that oh, there yeah. was like a dojo that was caring about what women needed. That showed me. So I decided to start teaching in Brooklyn. Women come to self-defense classes for a lot of different reasons. But mostly, every woman feels the real threat of violence that's around us all the time, whether they've been particularly attacked or abused or felt it with somebody in their family. What was really interesting about our early days is that every weekend we were out, you know, doing demonstrations. This is at a gay pride march, because we were at gay pride marches since the 70s. Participating in the pride demonstrations were really important for a lot of us because it was being open and proud. When I came out, it was no doubt a really, really important experience. I came from a family that was supportive, so it made it a kind of a different 
experience. Um, but certainly there is a way that it really did make me define who I was and feel my center and my core. Um, feeling who I was and letting people know because a lot of us when we were in the closet it really became a situation where like you didn't have a life that you talked about. You went places and people talked about their partners or their homes or their um, parties that they went to and when you're in the closet you're just quiet. Loud noise or yell no or yell something in your language just make noise okay as we strike and I'm gonna count okay and one we come to you as martial artists we come with empty hands My name is Demetria Takumbo, and I moved to Brooklyn in 2001. The Brooklyn court system wasn't very supportive, and they kept setting up meetings where I had to be alone with my ex-husband. And it was like the court didn't consider my safety. Our family social worker recommended that uh, we take self-defense. The first time that I went to CAE, it was for a free workshop for survivors. I felt held. These women saw me in need and, and pulled together and saw me through a very difficult time in my life. I felt that I needed to keep my kids there. You know, even though I was working and couldn't make it to my karate classes, I wanted to make sure that my children stayed connected to that community. It was really important to see multiple different types of people being able to do this similar movement their own way. I feel like being in CAE, a lot of the teachers were, were queer and just were. I don't know, I don't want to get emotional, but I feel like, for me, like, it didn't feel safe in school to be myself. Mm. And I wasn't okay with being myself. It was, it was seeing women being themselves at CAE and other spaces that really, like, the same way I was getting messages that I wasn't valuable and that I should hide right. who I am, I was also getting messages that I should love who I am and that I can still create community. I don't have to be isolated. I can still be myself and be mercy and be joyful with the identities that I hold. I kind of feel like I grew up in the world of martial arts and activism. And there was an amazing fit as we are developing, you know, individual and collective strength. Palms facing away, inhale. And we always say that martial arts is transformative. Shoulders to the fingertips, one energy line. In March 1997, the Center for Anti-Violence Education celebrated June Jordan, and she wrote this poem. And I think about the Brooklyn Women's Martial Arts, your incredible success of 22 years and still doing it. And I wonder where this beginning of women's self-defense will take you, take us, 22 years from now. Will you be traveling to villages in India and cities in China? And will you be hosting sister visitors from Ireland and from Afghanistan and from Nigeria? Will you be women traveling from here and going elsewhere or women from elsewhere coming here to share the ever increasing collective strength of women united to possess the entire world as our exhilarating, open, safe space? With the advent of spring, I say, we'll see. <laughs>